Hello, Dascalo here. Welcome to a new episode. On this episode, we're exploring the beautiful country, Kyrgyzstan. We're going to the capital, Bisek, and we're exploring the surroundings, the valleys, the canyons, the lakes. So, without further ado, let's go. New trip begins, we're going to Kyrgyzstan in Asia. I'm going with my friend Kostas from high school. I'm in him now at the airport. I have been knowing Kostas for almost 20 years and within the last few years we start traveling regularly together as we share the same passion about exploring new destinations. And there he is. We have a connection flight to Istanbul and then to Bisek, the capital of Kyrgyzstan. We smoothly arrive at the airport where we had a few hours for a connection flight. The flight from Istanbul was about 5 hours and with the sunrise and the new day we were there. the security and we also got local SIM card for 15 USD with unlimited data, a must-have when you're visiting a new country. When we were out from the airport the sun was already up, we picked our rental for the following four days and we started our journey towards the city. We took the car and we're going to Bisek, see the capital and then head towards the lake. Bisek, formerly Bisek, and France is the capital and largest city of Kyrgyzstan. Bisek is also the administrative center of the Chui region. The region surrounds the city, although the city itself is not part of the region, but rather a region-level unit of Kyrgyzstan. Bisek is situated near the Kazakhstan-Kyrgyzstan border with a population of about 1 million people in 2021. Bisek is a city of wide boulevards and marble-faced public buildings combined with numerous Soviet-style apartment blocks surrounding interior courtyards. There are also thousands of smaller private built houses, mostly outside the city centre. Morning from the sunny Bisek. It's 8.20 just so the park behind us is not open yet. Right here is the drama theater and now we're going to see Lenin statue and a huge huge Kyrgyzstan flag. Right behind me you can see Vladimir Lenin which was a Russian revolutionary politician and political theorist. He served as the first and founding head of government of Soviet Russia from 1970 to 1924 and of the Soviet Union from 1922 to 1924. Here, you can see the National History Museum and right behind me is the Mana statue. Over there, there is a huge big flag of Kyrgyzstan. According to the epic, Manas is the 10th century legendary hero of the Kyrgyz people, who value him as their sacred ancient forefather. The Manas legend goes to the heart of their spiritual identity and is a symbol of their nationalism and culture. Dun, 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 dun. Scan the QR code with your mobile phone. Even though the majority of the writings were in the local language, they had those QR codes which you could scan and find more information in English, which was very useful. So we start exploring the Oak Park, which has beautiful flowers, and we also saw many squirrels. 
The tiny sand ground squirrel is a species of squirrel found in the grasslands of Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan and Western China. This ground squirrel is about 20 cm long with a tail of 6 cm and weighs 300 to 400 grams. In the summer the coat is grey or yellowish brown and in the winter it is altogether paler and greyer. The park is also famous for its fountains, lots of green space and an open air museum of sculptures. was very well maintained and you could see people working on it. And here we see a man wearing a traditional Kyrgyzstani hat, which is very nice to witness in person. Right behind me is the National Museum of Art. It opens at 11 o'clock, so we might come later. Right now it's 9 o'clock. On the side of the street were those little kiosks to buy coffee and tea. Behind me you see this beautiful building which is the Opera Theatre. And it's one of the landmarks opposite the Fine Art Museum and next to the Hyatt Regency Hotel. The venue hosts local and international opera and ballet presentations, as well as occasional classical concerts and other musical and artistic events. And off we go to our next stop. Victory Square is a public square in the city center which is dedicated to the victory over Nazi Germany. It was created in 1985 on the occasion of the 40th anniversary of the end of the Second World War. The central area is filled with the Victory Monument and was once the site of the main Bissek market. The square features a statue of a woman waiting for her husband to return home from the war. The depicted woman standing under a tinduk in the form of a funeral ware held by three ribs of red granite representing a year. And right here we are in Victory Park, this huge monument that has the gas running all the time, which represents the eternal fire of Kyrgyzstan. Next is the Kyrgyz State Circus, which was one of a series of circus buildings commissioned across the Soviet Union during the 70s and 80s. With the passing of the years, it got damaged by wear and tear, but fully renovated in 2005. It still functions today, although its performances are less frequent than in the building's Soviet ape day, when crowds of more than 2,000 came to see what was then the capital's biggest spectacle. Now we are in Mam Sarasi, Bisek Central Mosque. Let's go inside. The construction of the mosque started in 2012 and it was inaugurated in 2018. It's huge, magnificent and you can hear the birds inside. It has been founded by the Turkish Diana. Look at this beautiful carpet. It is one of several mosques founded by Turkey across the world. The mosque is built in an Ottoman revival style with four minarets, each with three balconies. It resembles the Kokatep Mosque from Istanbul in design. The mosque has a capacity of 9,000 people in the closed space and 30,000 people overall. The six streets follow a grid pattern with most flanked on both sides by narrow irrigation channels, which provide water to the trees and shade during the hot summers. They're warming up for the shift at the restaurant. Front. And we carry on a bit outside from the city center. And right now we're going to Oz Bazaar. This bazaar is one of the largest in Bisek. You will find it in the western part of the city, not far from the western bus station. At the huge open air market, it's possible to buy everything. food products and spices to common household goods, clothes, souvenirs and even musical instruments you will be surrounded by all the products you could possibly imagine. The crowds, the smells and the noises can feel a bit overwhelming but it's an experience you won't easily forget. Markets tell so many stories about the culture, they give insights into the way people dress, walk and talk to each other. At the Oz Bazaar, not only will you discover a vast array of products, but 
you will also find out what are the latest kiddies fashions and trends. The Old Bazaar is the main market where the locals of Bisek come to buy and sell the products, so it's still very authentic and not overrun by tourists yet. So inside here, I sell fruits, dry fruits, vegetables, fresh food to eat, raw food, mushrooms, sauces. The smell is very nice, you can smell the spices. It's definitely worth a visit to come here. I sell flowers. So this place operates every day from the morning until 7 o'clock in the evening. Look at Smitano. Sulokam Smitano. Okay. Smitano. One. Adi. Adi. The only issue that you may encounter with buying things at the bazaar is that every price and product names are written in Russian while most sellers speak only Kyrgyz or Russian. Mmm, very nice. So this is bread with onion. Learning a few words or expressions in those languages before visiting the country will be definitely be handy. So whenever you go into the country, you should always try the local food and see the local markets. It's a nice experience to smell the fruits, the vegetables, and in general to see the culture and blend in. Now we're heading back to the car and we're heading towards another mosque. Here we are in the central mosque and they have a, a prayer right now. Inside the mosque, a baby boy was playing with his toy car while his father was praying. And that's the prayer. We do it five times per day. The Turk Park in Bisek is a large green space with great walking paths, well tented gardens, memorials, and statues of famous Kyrgyz, including Mustafa Ataturk, the revolutionary and founder of the Republic of Turkey, who the park is named after. There are many people walking and biking through the park, so it is great for a visit. We are at the Love Park, where we'll have lunch and we also watch some people wakeboard at the lake. It is really fascinating there are so many parks around the capital Bisek and how important they are for the culture of Korea's people, spending time off relaxing with their loved ones and their families close to nature. So right here we are in Victory Park, it's a huge 30 meter tall monument Dedicated to the blockade of Leningrad, the Germans had surrounded Leningrad and decided to start the city into submission instead of entering it Many persons who escaped the entrapment in 1942 were transported to Siberia or other regions in the Soviet Union where fighting was not taking place. Kyrgyzstan accepted over 16,000 persons, including 3,500 children. The monument comprises three columns, which are joined at the top by a pyramid shape. The park is located on the southern edge of Bisek and is not to be confused with the Victory Square. It is a beautiful, maintained area with wide lawns and many flower beds. Another monument nearby is dedicated to the border guards. A sculpture of a soldier and his dog is placed on a short pedestal. These were the best rose gardens that we had seen in the city. And of course we met with another squirrel which was so playful. We left the city and we started going towards a sea cool lake. In the morning when I flew the drone, I saw in the horizon those buildings looking like skyscrapers. But when we reached closer, it was Bisek Big Factory, only 5 kilometers away from the city center. The more we were driving away, the nature was becoming more interesting. A bit further away, the police stopped us for a quick checkup, but all was safe and good. For this trip, I had to get an international driving license, which looks like this, and in some foreign countries, is mandatory. 
We kept on driving east going away from the capital. We had some laughs about our past memories. As we carry on driving we passed many trucks parked on the side of the road, which most likely they must have had a strike as it carried on for many many kilometers. Later on we passed Tokmok which is a city in the Chui Valley, northern Kyrgyzstan, east of the country's capital of Bisek, with a population of about 70,000. From 2003 to 2006 it was the administrative seat of Chui region. And we have arrived to Burana Tower, we're going up and then we're going to see a beautiful canyon. The mountains behind are magnificent. I'm really looking forward to hike them. Oh wow, war heard the side in English, fantastic! I was quite surprised as the majority, if not all the signs in the capital, were in the local language. The Burana Tower is a large minaret in the Chui Valley in northern Kyrgyzstan. It is located about 80 km east of the country's capital Bisek, near the town of Tokmok. The tower along with grave markers, some earthworks and the remnants of the castle and three mausoleum, it's all that remains of the ancient city of Balasagun. And this is how it looks inside. Which was established by the Karakhanids at the end of the 9th century. The tower was built in the 11th century and was used as a template for other minarets. It is one of the oldest architectural constructions in Central Asia. The tower was originally 45 meters high, however, over the centuries a number of earthquakes caused a significant damage to the structure. And we made it to the top of the tower. And those are the traditional houses that the people used to live in the mountains. Oh, we're going down the stairs. It's a very, very narrow way to go up. Not easy, very well maintained though. The last major earthquake in the 15th century destroyed the top half of the tower, reducing it to its current height of 25 meters. A renovation project was carried out in the 1970s to restore its foundation and repair the west-facing side of the tower, which was in danger of collapse. The entire site, including the mausoleums, castle foundations and grave markers, now function as a museum and there is a small building on the site containing historical information as well as artifacts found at the site in the surrounding region. I said earlier on the video that they used to live in the yurt, but actually they still live and were going to stay for a couple of nights, which you will see in detail on the next video. By the time we arrived at Konorchek Canyon it was dark, so we only got a few shots by night. But we weren't sad as on the next few days we were going to see even better with taking canyons which look out from this world. On the next chapter of Kyrgyzstan, we're going around the Sikul Lake, we're seeing the Maldives of Kyrgyzstan, we're blending and meeting more of the locals. We are going to the thermal pools. We are eating local food. We are sleeping close to nature in a Kyrgyzstan traditional house. We are driving through some amazing canyons. We are seeing many animals. We are seeing the extravagant nature from around the lake and the mountains. We are getting a flat tire and we are seeing more animals. So stay tuned and I will see you on the next one. Until then, stay safe and have fun. Bye!